education along the way. That night she goes home and she sits with her family and she talks about the opportunity she's been presented to go to Tennessee State University. Her parents say, go for it, Wilma. A few weeks later, Coach Temple comes to her school. And when he comes to her school, he brings with him what is called a letter of intent. A letter of intent. How many of you ever heard of a letter of intent? For those that have not, it is basically a contract. He comes to the school and he sits with Wilma and her family and some of her coaches and teachers. And it's an agreement between the college and the athlete or the college and the scholar or the college and the FBLA member. It's an agreement. The college says things like this. We will provide you a place to live. We will provide you the books you need. We will cover your tuition. We'll put you on a meal plan. But there's some obligations on your part. You are to uphold the highest standards of our college or our university. You are to make good decisions. Keep your grades up. You are also to come to practice and we go to track meets or whatever the case may be. You are to represent the university. So they sit down and they sign this letter of intent, this letter of agreement. Wilma graduates from high school and summer comes along. How many of you like summertime? How many of you think summer goes way too fast though? Yeah, teachers do too. I've been there. But fall eventually comes and Wilma's younger brothers and sisters that are still in elementary, middle, and high school head away to school. But for the first time in Wilma's young life, she was leaving home, going to a place that she had only seen pictures of. The reason I tell you that is when Wilma was a young child, she didn't have the internet. Televisions in homes were extremely rare. The only phone, the only telephone was located at the corner store in her community. Wilma goes into her bedroom and she gathers her meager belongings. When I say meager belongings, Wilma Rudolph, when she went off to school, basically had the clothes she was wearing, the shoes on her feet, everything else she carried away in a brown paper sack she'd gotten from the grocery store. Why do I tell you that? Because, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we become too focused on what I would call material possessions. And we say that, you know what, material possessions equate to success. For some of you, that may be true, and there's nothing wrong with that. But more importantly than material possessions are the skills and the abilities that each of one of you have as individuals. If you don't know what you're good at, ask one of your advisors. Ask somebody, what do you think it is about me that makes me different? Capitalize upon your abilities to create your future. When Wilma went away to school, I told you she had the clothes on her back, the shoes on her feet. Everything else was in a brown paper sack. You think you got it rough sometime? Wilma Rudolph was one of 22 children in her family. A simple meal on the table at the end of any given day was success for the Rudolph family. Sometimes we have obstacles again. Sometimes we have challenges in life. You're not the only one that has them. But again, I said this this morning, do you choose to give in to those obstacles and say like Wilma Rudolph could have, my mom and dad never graduated from high school. I uh, was told that I would never walk, I would never run and play with my friends. So therefore, I'm just going to simply give up. I'm going to sit here and watch the world pass me by. She chose not to do that. Did she fail? She failed more times than she won. But she never gave up. And she worked so very hard that in 1960, in 1960, Wilma Rudolph earned the right. She didn't get her name drawn out of a hat. She was not a lucky lottery winner. She earned the right to represent the United States of America in the International Olympics in Rome. How many of you, by show of hands, have ever watched any Olympic Games on television? I want you to think about this. In 1960, the games themselves, the events, are almost identical as to how they are today. Yes, the television coverage has changed, the technologies have changed, but the events themselves were just about identical as today. 
Imagine, if you will, a tremendous stadium with thousands of people from around the world sitting there watching the athletes preparing for competition. They're there to cheer on the athletes representing their country. They look down on the field. There are people just like you and I, but they're envisioning. Envisioning like some of you do when you go into FBLA competition. What is it going to be like when all my hard work and my dedication pays off? Yeah, I'm nervous going into that event. And you, I tell you, that's good. How many of you ever been in an event and you get butterflies? You know what you do? You try to teach those butterflies to fly in formation so they give you enthusiasm and energy. So if you're going into the event and you're nervous, you know what help tells me? You care. They look down on the field. There's athletes, again, envisioning what it's going to be like when they cross the finish line and capture their gold medal. But there's also athletes down there that are stretching. They're preparing for competition. But of all the athletes on the field, the one that was of greatest interest to everybody was Wilma Rudolph. Why? First and foremost, Wilma Rudolph is an unknown black athlete. Second, something's obviously wrong with her left leg. Everywhere she's walking, she's walking with a limp. People are asking questions out loud. They're not whispering to each other. They're not just being quiet. They're talking loudly. Dude, what's she doing here? What's the United States trying to prove? That girl can't even walk. How is she going to run? Have you watched her everywhere she goes? She's limping. You would have thought the United States would have brought an athlete in here who had a chance to win. Why would they choose her? You know what? The race for the United States of America is over, and it hasn't even begun. They discovered, though, very quickly what Wilma Rudolph was doing in that particular stadium that particular year. Because when that starting pistol cracked, Wilma Rudolph tore down that cinder path in a world record 11 seconds and captured her first Olympic gold medal. Her next event was the 200 meter dash. This time she was competing against a girl from Germany by the name of Yetta Haney and Yetta held the world record. But Yetta Haney had never raced Wilma even though Yetta Haney, Haney was favored to win. The runners lined up and the starting pistol cracked. Wilma and Yetta jumped to the lead, turning the race into a fighting duel, but with a burst of speed on the backstretch. Wilma snapped the tape, and she captured her second gold medal. A few days later, Wilma is racing one more time. The event this time is the 400-meter relay. German team is favored to win. Running anchor, running last for the German team, is a revenge-seeking Yetta Haney who had vowed that she would not lose another race to Wilma. Running last for the Americans was Wilma. The runners lined up and the starting pistol cracked. The Germans and the Americans jumped to the lead, turning the race into a fighting duel. The first runners handed the baton to the second. The second runners handed the baton to the third. And when the third runners handed the batons to Wilma and Yetta... Wilma Rudolph dropped hers. Yetta Haney, the girl from Germany, raced all alone toward the finish line. Wilma's Olympic dream was over. Her thrill of victory was simply through. But instead of quitting, instead of giving up, she kept hearing those words of encouragement that kept running through her mind from her family, from her friends, from her teachers, her coaches that said, Wilma, never give up, never give up, never give up. Less than 100 meters from the finish line. Less than 100 meters from the finish line, Wilma reached down and she grabbed that baton in one hand. And what Olympic records have come to call a miracle today, she pulled up next to Germany's Yetta Haney. The two race neck for neck, stride for stride. 90 meters go, 80 meters go, 70 meters. 100,000 people are on their feet yelling wildly because they knew they weren't just watching another race. They were witnessing a miracle. 20 meters go, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the tape snapped. Wilma Rudolph. Wilma Rudolph won. She captured her third Olympic gold medal. She was the first American woman in the history of those events to have ever done so. In 2000, 
In the year 2000, ESPN Sports announced Wilma Rudolph as one of the top athletes of the century. But again, think back. She could have quit. She could have given up. She could have said, you know what? Life has thrown too many obstacles in my way. I'm not even going to try. Everybody in here comes from a different background. I do not know your situation, but I do know this. Through education and drive and determination, you can create your future. But you've got to have a dream. And remember I talked earlier about those purposes? Make that your dream. And make the choices and decisions to attain it. But you know what we need in these United States of America that will get you closer to your dream than anything else? Yes, you can get an education. It doesn't have to be a college degree. I have a student that was graduated, Timothy Cromwell. He turned 49 yesterday. You leave that student of mine, 49 years old. Special ed diploma that he gave him back in 1987. Because he could barely read He's a certified welder, certified electrician, certified plumber. He's a certified in uh, uh, heating, HVAC, air conditioning. $112,000 a year as a project lead. Architects and engineers have to come to Timothy and to ask them before they do any job on the hospital in Jacksonville, Florida that he is currently in charge of building. Maybe you've got a career in tech aspiration. You know what? Follow that dream. But I will tell you this, no matter what your dream is, you cannot have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. That million dollars doesn't have to be finances, but whatever it is, you cannot accomplish that with a minimum wage work ethic. I have taught my children who are now grown, always go the extra mile. Always try to think two steps forward. If you're helping someone with a job to do something, figure out what they need. Work ethic is extremely important in success. Where does it begin? It doesn't begin when you graduate from high school, when you finish middle school. It starts where you are today. And again, nobody in the world is responsible for you and I or our success, but you are so very blessed. You know why? Because number one, you've taken the opportunity, you've taken the chance, and you've taken the risk, and you've taken all the, the great things about being part of FBLA. But there's some people in here I want to recognize.